How to Manage Peace Cavus in Children and Adolescents. Summary, Cavo Varus. Foot is a common condition that may be caused by a neurologic or traumatic disorder seen in both the pediatric and adult population that presents with a cavus arch and hindfoot varus. Diagnosis is made clinically with the presence of a foot deformity characterized by cavus, hindfoot varus, plantar flexion of the first ray, and forefoot adduction. A Coleman block test is useful to assess for the flexibility of the hindfoot deformity to assist with surgical planning. Treatment ranges from orthotics to operative soft tissue release and operative osteotomies depending on patient age and flexibility of the A's foot deformity. Epidemiology, demographics, seen in both pediatric and adult populations, anatomic location, when bilateral, often hereditary or congenital. Etiology, deformity characterized by cavus, elevated longitudinal arch, plantar flexion of the first ray and forefoot pronation hindfoot varus forefoot adduction. Pathophysiology, neurologic, 67% due to a neurologic condition, Diagnosis of neurologic condition is aught critical to render appropriate treatment. Unilateral, rule out tethered spinal cord or spinal cord tumor bilateral, most commonly due to Charcot Marie Tooth, CMT disease. Muscle imbalances generate deformity. Weak tibialis anterior and peroneus brevis, overpowered by strong peroneus longus, and posterior tibialis results in plantar flexed first ray and forefoot pronation with compensatory hindfoot varus, with the first metatarsal plant flexed and forefoot pronated, the medial forefoot strikes ground, first the subtalar joint supinates to bring the lateral forefoot to the ground and maintain three-point contact, resulting in hindfoot varus. While initially flexible, hindfoot varus can become rigid with time. Idiopathic, usually subtle and bilateral, traumatic, talus fracture, Malunian compartment syndrome crush injury. Associated conditions. Conditions which present with cavavarous foot, Charcot-Marie tooth disease, cerebral palsy, Friedreich's ataxia, spinal cord lesions, polio, amnitoic band syndrome, ABS. Conditions caused by the presence of cavavarous foot. See complications below. Presentation. History. Recurrent ankle sprains and lateral ankle pain. Peroneal tendon pathology lateral foot pain. Excessive weight bearing by the lateral foot due to deformity can result in fifth metatarsal stress fractures. Painful plantar calluses under first metatarsal, head and fifth metatarsal head or base, plantar fasciitis, elevated medial arch, forefoot pronation, and tight gastronemias lead to contracture of the plantar fascia. Physical exam, Coleman block test, Evaluates flexibility of hindfoot deformity. Technique. Place one, block under the lateral foot, eliminates contribution of the plant R flexed, first ray and forefoot pronation to the hindfoot deformity. Findings. Flexible hindfoot will correct to neutral or valgus when block placed under lateral aspect of foot. Rigid hindfoot will not correct to neutral chi san guide surgical. Treatment. Flexible hindfoot deformities resolve with Bondot forefoot corrective procedures. Rigid hindfoot deformities require corrective hindfoot osteotomy in addition to forefoot procedures. Peekaboo heel. Anterior standing examination shows varus heel peaking around the ankle. Prominent first metatarsal fat pads. Silfersky old test. Check dorsiflexion with both knee flexion and knee extension. If tight only with knee extension, then gastrocnemius is tight. If tight also with knee flexion, then soleus is also tight. 1. Gastronemius tightness often present with cavavarous foot. 2. Altered gait, unstable base of support, increased double limb stance and decreased single limb stance. 3. Wasting of first dorsal interosseous muscle of the hand, suggestive of CMT. 4. Spine exam, scoliosis is suggestive of CMT, spinal dysraphism. Imaging, radiographs, recommended views, standing anteroposterior, AP, lateral radiographs of the ankle, standing AP, lateral and oblique radiographs of the foot, findings AP foot, 
talocalcaneal angle 20 degree, NL 20, 45 degree, hind foot varus. Talonavicular overcoverage. Talonavicular angle 7 degree indicates forefoot adduction. Metatarsal overlap, forefoot pronation. Lateral foot, lateral talo, first metatarsal angle, Miri's angle, greater than four degree apex dorsal, break in Miri's line caused by plantar flexion of the first ray. Calcaneal pitch or inclination angle is greater than 30 degree. Sinus tarsi see-through sign and double tailor dome sign. Due to external rotation of the ankle and hind foot relative to the X-ray cassette, which is placed along the amedial border of the adducted forefoot. Bell-shaped cuboid, increased distance between base of fifth metatarsal and not medial cuneiform, oblique foot, metatarsal stress fractures, calcaneonavicular coalitions. Studies, electrodiagnostic studies, EMG NCS. Diagnostic algorithm for CMT generally dictates a neurologic physical exam, electrodiagnostic studies, genetic testing, genetic studies used to confirm diagnosis after physical exam, and electrodiagnostic studies. Treatment, non-operative, accommodative shoe wear, indications rarely sufficient except in mild deformity, full-length semi-rigid insole orthotic with a bot depression for the first ray and a lateral wedge. Indications, mild cavus foot deformity in adult, not indicated in children. Semi-rigid orthoses with a very minimum arch fill, rear foot post, four millimeter heel lift, and a four foot valgus, equals wedge or four foot padding are recommended for pes cavus. Supramalleolar orthosis, SMO, indications, more severe covovarus deformity, recalcitrant to shoe wear accommodations, ankle foot orthosis, AFO. Indications may be needed if equinus also present, resulting in equinocavovarus foot deformity, works best if Aquinas is a dynamic deformity, not rigid. Lace-up ankle brace and or high-top shoe or boots. Indications may consider in moderate deformities when patient does not tolerate the more rigid bracing with an SMO or AFO. Operative. Soft tissue reconstruction. Indications. Failure of non-operative treatment. Performed with a combination of the following procedures. Plantar release. Indications, cavus deformity, technique, plantar fascia release, Steindler stripping, release short flexors off the calcaneus, peroneus longus to brevis transfer, indications, plantar flexed first ray, technique, decreases plantar flexion force on first ray without weakening aversion. Posterior tibial tendon transfer, indications, muscle imbalance, posterior tibialis, typically is markedly as stronger than Everture's and maintains strength for a long time in most dot cavovarus feet. May consider transfer of posterior tibialis to dorsum of foot if severe dorsiflexion weakness of anterior tibialis. Lengthening of gastrocnemius or tendoachilles, TL. Indication, true ankle equinus, gastrocnemius recession produces less calf weakness and can be chiatric combined with plantar release. Simultaneously, TAL should be staged several weeks after plantar release. First metatarsal dorsiflexion osteotomy. Indications, flexible hind foot varus deformities, normal Coleman block test, corrects the forefoot pronation driving the hind foot deformity. Lateral ankle ligament reconstruction, e.g. brostrum ligament reconstruction. Indications, chronic ankle instability due to lignamentous incompetence following longstanding cavovarus. Jones transfers of EHL to neck of first MT and lesser toe extensors to second fifth MT necks. Indication, say a cursorisic and shishimtse. Toe clawing combined with cavus foot performed if the indication is met and time permits the modified Jones transfer for the hallux includes an IP joint fusion. Lateralizing calcaneal valgus producing osteotomy. Indications, rigid hind foot varus deformity, abnormal Coleman block test, triple arthrodesis, Indication, almost never indicated due to very poor long-term results. Thanks for watching. Subscribe.